Hello, 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 and welcome back. It's Wednesday again. It's time for another episode of the Domino V14 Deep Dive. This Wednesday, it's about admins. Admin Central was the topic, and today we'd like to spend a whole hour on all things admin related. Let's first introduce me. I'm Thomas Hampel. I'm the product manager for the Domino Server. And for this show, I've invited Mark, who is a development lead, um, to join me in and talk about all things admin related. Uh, Mark, do you just want to say hello to the audience? Sure, Thomas. Thank you very much. Yes, greetings, everybody. Um, I've watched a lot of these webinars so far since the beginning of the series, and I'm proud to present the work that the team has done today to you. Thank you for attending. All right. Thanks for that. Um, and as every week, we are supported by a whole team of people in, at the back office. I guess Tim is here, Tim Clark, managing the Q&A. Tim, want to say hello quickly? Yeah. Hi, folks. Thanks for coming along to this webinar. Look forward to um, answering your questions, along with Nirmala, who's joining us. Wonderful. So hello, um, there is Nirmala. Great. Your microphone is working great. Good. Uh, speaking of logistics, I need to mention that any question that you may have throughout the webinar, please put that into the questions and answers panel to the uh, in this chat uh, in this tool. So make sure to use that. Our team will try to answer these questions as we go along, and we will bring some of your questions forward at the end in the Q and A section. All right. Did I forget anything? Oh yeah, I should say that yes, of course, this webinar is going to be recorded and you will get the slides as a handout provided as a tech note by HCL. With that, let's get started. As usual with the legal disclaimer that you've seen in past episodes. So uh, today, February 14, Valentine's Day, Valentine, your Valentine being Domino 14, I hope, and uh, this time around the Admin Central is the topic. It's uh, the uh, one episode in the series. Um, if you are interested in watching previous webinars, there is a replay code, a tech note that we've created. So go to that URL or scan the QR code to find the replays. There will be another webinar next week about application development, but uh, let's get started with talking about all the good stuff that is administrator related. We've invited you to join this webinar to learn about what's new in Domino administration. Admin Central certainly being one of the key features in version 14 that has been delivered. But there are a number of other good things in the admin client that we would like to talk about or things that administrators need to know about. So I'm going to talk about two or three slides in the beginning before we then jump into the main topic, which is Admin Central. All right, so what do you need to know, dear admins out there? Um, maybe you've already had the opportunity to install the first version 14 server, and you may have noticed the Domino server installer has changed. What we have uh, introduced, what we've uh, announced, is to include components in the Domino server installer that are packaged with the product and, so to say, helping administrators to um, to install add-on components such as Nomad, Verse, or OnTime without having to download any additional software package. However, what I'd like to point out here is, even though these components are part of the Domino Server installer, you need to enable them um, by choosing custom option install. Verse is enabled by default, but Nomad and OnTime are two optional components. So in the Domino Server installer, if you choose the custom enterprise server option, you will get to this dialog here. And as you can see, Nomad and OnTime are not checked by default. Um, if you want to install them, just tick the box, and then they will be installed along with the Domino Server. There are also options to handle a silent installation by enabling the chosen feature list to include Verse and OnTime and Nomad in the list. <clears throat> there is a little trick here. You can pre-record a so-called response file. Um, as a seasoned administrator, you know that these silent installation options can be 
uh, pre-recorded and replayed if you have to install a number, a larger number of servers in an automated way. Now, we already mentioned these components to be included, um, but the Domino server installer was provided in December, December 14th. And mean in the meantime, our development teams have been busy and have also upgraded some of these components. I think Tim and me mentioned this in the uh, overview webinar of this series, that if you want to be on the latest and greatest version of Nomad and Verse, you need to update the components that come with the installer. So even though they're installed, another version is available and you may need to download the more latest version um, after the install. There is a lot of uh, improvements covered by the updates. So for details, look at the fixed list database. This is not a new information. Like I said, we, we covered that already. Let me switch to um, some other improvements. For instance, in Domino Backup, there is um, an important improvement requested by you, dear admins and customers out there. You've requested the Domino Backup tooling to include a backup of the nodes in e, meaning when you back up your server, um, the current configuration, the nodes in e, um, should be included in the backup log. And that's what we've done. So you will find that in the backup log. You will see that here on the screenshot showing the nodes in e to the lower right. Um, also worth mentioning is if you're interested in integrating an existing backup solution with Domino Backup, please take a look at the open source GitHub repository um, here on the left side, which provides documentation and uh, details on how to connect third party uh, backup solutions with Domino Backup. A really interesting repository, by the way. So please look at that. All right, another goodie I like to switch to is a new feature that was introduced, I think in version, version 10, we introduced Domino cluster repair, meaning uh, databases that were missing in a cluster, or say if you have a Domino cluster and one database was uh, corrupted one server side, it would automatically be repaired by pulling a replica from the other side. Version 14 now enhances the cluster repair methodology by also repairing uh, DAOs attachments. So if a user or someone is accessing a file attachment that is in the DAOs repository and this DAOs repository somehow is missing an NLO file, the Domino server will try to pull that file from the other cluster partner. So that's a huge improvement for customers with large databases using lots of attachments and lots of uh, DAOs objects. Uh, more details are provided in our online help. So I'm not going to show this in detail because for the sake of time, we would like to focus on our main topic today, which is Admin Central. So switching gears a little bit, Admin Central, I presented this already in previous webinars as an attempt to revisit the story of how to manage a Domino server, how to do uh, basic administration tasks like user management and group management in the Domino context. Traditionally, you require an admin client uh, to manage your users. And an admin client, unfortunately, is only available on a Windows machine. So users who are either preferring like a Mac or a Linux machine or may prefer to work on mobile have not had the opportunity to manage users if they had to. So we asked our development team to revisit the entire admin story and build something called Admin Central with the design principles being the user interface has to focus on the most common admin tasks and the user interface needs to provide access from basically anywhere, meaning browser, mobile, and even notes client on Windows or Mac if you want to do so. Um, it is not meant to be the one-to-one -one replacement for the admin client. It's meant to provide the most essential tasks for you. And the next couple of slides are going to tell you or going to explain to you how to set up Admin Central and what to do with it. 
to see what the result is, I'm going to put myself into the role of a junior admin, meaning an administrator who just has to manage users and I'm not the most, um, I'm not aware of all the different settings that need to go along with it. I'm just interested in registering a user. I've shown this video before, but this is in order for you to get an idea of how simple it is with using Admin Central. So in this video, I'm using my iPad to register a new user. First, I use Nomad on my iPad. I open up Admin Central and I click on register a user. The user registration form is pretty simple. I just have to provide first name, last name. That's about it. Click submit button. And what the tool will do behind the scenes is it will create a request. The request will be processed by the server backend. It will of course create a person document and also it will create an ID file for the user in the ID vault. Now that's really easy. But this webinar is about how to set all this up and how to take a benefit from this. And who could explain this any better than Mark Skola? So Mark, if you're still on, can you help the audience or guide the audience to the technical details and the setup of Admin Central? Yes, Thomas, thank you very much. And thank you for doing the demo. Um, next slide, please. So this is time to do the deep dive. So let's dive in the deep end of the pool. Okay, so as Thomas said, um, one of our design principles was to make it easy to use. And as he said, you know, we're not, this is not a um, parity replacement of the admin client like the old web admin tried to do. Um, that's one of the, the ways we try to make it easier. And the other way we try to make it easier is to remove a lot of the complexity. Um, we're trying to make things that, that things are standardized um, and simplified so there is less options. So it's kind of like taking a Swiss Army knife, which is the admin client, and making a much simpler tool out of it. So we're focusing first on the user and group management. Um, in future versions, we'll be looking at application management and server management, but at the beginning, we stayed with user and group management. The second mindset we had going into this was for um, two personas. Uh, um, as Thomas mentioned, we have the senior admin, and the senior admin you know, knows Domino, uses the admin client for, for many years, and that admin will be setting up the configuration and profiles um, for user registration and deletion. And the second per persona is the junior admin, or it could be a business user or a help desk user, um, or maybe just somebody that um, owns some, some group or other business application. And this person doesn't have the, the, the bigger mindset or the, or the ex experience, and that's why um, we try to simplify, simplify things for that kind of user. Yeah, like, like me in my, in my little demo earlier on. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so I think in your TA days, you were very experienced. You'd be a super admin. Um, and then, so as Thomas mentioned, um, you know, we've had a lot of requests for admin client on Mac and other devices. So yes, you know, the, one of the other big focus and it really doing the heavy lift here was our, our template developers was to make this work on the Node's client and, and, the, and the, the Nomad platform. I just want to qualify, you can't go after, go to the database with the web browser directly. You have to go through Nomad web just to qualify that. Next hey, slide. But the good, the, the good, um, Good piece of inf or good information here is that Nomad is part of the server installer, and by installing v14, you basically just have to tick the box to get the ability to open up Admin Central via Nomad on a version 14 server. Exactly. And then the other thing we do is that we also make it automatically created. So, you know, like Summer said, once you tick the box and Nomad's there, the database is also there. It's a domain-wide database, just like the other system databases as we call them, like admin4. Um, and then th we also have a request model. Now, that's one big difference from the old admin client, right? In the admin client, if you did a password reset, there's no indication that that occurred. If you registered a user, yes, you might see, um, or we certified a user, you might see request in admin4, but there's no log for that. So by having a request model, you actually can see um, who did what, you know, who deleted this person, let's say, say on Tuesday. Um, the next slide, I'll be talking about how MMP tracks and update the request in the database. And the CA process is also involved here, and that handles the certificate requests. Um, you only need request access to Admin Central, not to the whole download directory. Now, in the diagram here, what, what I want to really point out is um, that um, 
there are several databases involved. Admin Central is the new one. Admin 4, your, if you're experienced, admin you're used to. Um, and Admin 4 um, there drives um, the request through Admin P and, and CA process. So there's one section for um, Admin P requests and one for um, the CA process to handle the, uh, the certificate requests or for registering or for recertifying a user. That's important to know because that's, uh, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the CA process, but we're going to talk about that in depth. Um, one of the other things we did is that we um, leverage all the a lot of the existing APIs for um, for this work. Um, user registration is different, and we did have to tweak one of the APIs to support renaming for um, short name and internet addresses. Um, but similar to admin four, the all the requests in admin central are signed, um, and then further requests are created in admin four um, if they're needed. And I'll go into that a little bit more. So. Also more broadly, there are three types of, of threads that are added. There's a central processing thread that looks for new requests to, and that would then take them, send them to the request processing thread. By default, there is one um, thread, but you can create up to four and there's a link to the documentation for admin central that shows you how you can change that if you like. Um, there's also then a request or sort of status thread. So what happens is that when you create a request in admin central, if and another request is needed in admin four, it actually has the unID stored to tie those two together. Now that first request in admin four may not be an admin P request, it might be a certificate request. So if you're doing a move user in hierarchy, you need a new cert in the new hierarchy and the CA process handles that. So the first request would be the CA um, certificate request. After that is processed, you'll then create the first admin P request, like the initiate and re rename and Admin Central ties all those together. Um, then when that, that first request in the admin P chain is processed, it'll update, and that's when it'll mark the request in admin central as complete. If there's an error, it'll also bring that error to admin central. Um, we only do that for the first request in the chain because that request chains can, can be very complicated, um, but at least that's just what I'm gonna show you how those things are tied together. Um, Going back to the simplification, the senior admins can create the registration deletion profiles, and we're going to go through that and show you the options that are there. Um, with the whole goal of having the junior admin, just like Thomas did in the um, iPad demo, of uh, registering a user with the minimum amount of options they have to worry about. So for the at least for the junior admin, you don't have to specify the mail server or the ID bot. Thomas, do you have a Oh yeah, I was just about to ask whether I should switch to the next slide because um, what you just explained means we are taking a lot of the complexity from uh, away from uh, the administration process, whereas um, it's already there. It's still there. You already you still get the entire security of Domino without having to deal with all the complexity. Right. Yes. Next slide, please. I'm on the way. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so for the, the, the main requirements are, you know, obviously you need your average server to be Domino B14. Um, the template has to be upgraded, which is standard practice, right? You upgrade the admin server first. Um, you need a Notes 12 or 2 client or Nomad Web 109 or higher. Um, we are using a new feature in Admin Central for that was introduced in 1201 called Named Documents that I'll mention later on. Um, we already mentioned that the access rights you only need to Admin Central. Um, and yes, you really have to use an ID vault. So we're kind of building on the progression we've done with ID vault lately with like admin queue. And, um, I, and I, added the, I added the really statement at the bottom because I know some customers out there still don't have an ID vault. So friends out there, it's about time to set up your ID vault. Yes, because with all the changes we've done with automatic processing of like rename, recertify and rollover with admin queue, we did 12 that you really get a lot of the bang for the buck having that. Um, mm -hmm. Now, one of the big things also is that we, we require the, the Domino CA process. And, and why do we require that? Well, because once again, the target is the junior admin and the junior admin might not have the cert IDs and ID passwords to go with them. You know, want to keep things safe. So the CA process allevi alleviates that burden. Um, so the admin server also performs the Domino CA work and the ID vault operations, though the admin server of the ID vault can be different um, and usually actually is. Um, we'll talk about the remote console near the end um, and the admin central does 
honor the remote console security um, controls in the server document. Next slide, please. Well, this is fur further reading additional information, um, which is helpful because we are providing these slides as a handout uh, later on. So if you want to read further into these topics, we'll have the links ready for you. I guess the audience is interested in how to configure Admin Central and especially how to set up the CA process if you haven't done so. So that's what we're going to talk through next. So um, next slide, please. It's already up. Maybe it takes a second for oh, everyone right. around the globe to show up. Is it up for you or? Do we... uh, I, don't, I don't see the red check mark yet. That would be the next oh, one. The red, oh, sorry, the, the red one, this one, sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, this is a uh, the big red check mark, obviously is an important thing to note. Um, before you migrate your certified ID to the CA, um, you have to think about alternate language support. Now, why would you do alternate language support? An alternate language support allows user to have a secondary name in their native language, but makes it easier for them to type versus the primary name, which is, is an internationalized name. Now, most customers probably fall into one or two camps. You either never use alternate name or you already are using alternate name. But if you're considering using alternate name, it's better to do it before you start the migration process. Um, you can do it later, it's just a little more complicated. And the caveats there are, um, you should add all the language you, you're going to support in your organization first to the root cert. You then can choose all or a subset to any OU below that. And an OU can't contain a language that the parent cert does not have. Mm -hmm. Next for, slide, this, we, for this, um, we don't have a demo because setting up alternate language support is actually independent from setting up SCA. And as Mark, you just said, um, customers either already have that or clearly know that they don't need that that feature. And so, and, and, and language, was, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just about to say the the alternate language support. If you you have alternate language support or plan to use it, then this is the right point in time to enable it. Right, and that, and that previous slide deck did have a link to that specific documentation. The next slide, please. On the way. Okay. Okay, so um, users are always registered as a full notes user with an ID and ID vault. Like we said, ID vault is certainly required. Um, so there's no difference between a notes user or a web user. The CA process obviously is required and it's used for registration and recertification. Um, an ID vault is used, and two important points of that, because remember, this is a, a request model, right? So if you're the admin, an admin has a password reset authority if you set it up that way. But you're not the admin doing this anymore, you're the server doing it. So the server has to have password reset authority to the vault in order to do password reset. Similarly, the admin is not recertifying or registering users here, the server is. So the server has to be added, the admin server has to be added to the registration authority of the CA process. That's a very important um, point to um, configure. Next slide, please. Give it a second to show up. Yep, sure. Okay. So this is how you actually do the migration. Uh, obviously, this is using the traditional um, admin client. Um, so this is the configuration tab toolbar. You go to the migrate certifier, um, and then you pick the certifier, hit OK, and of course, you're going to get prompted for your password. And once again, this would be the senior admin, not the junior admin, obviously doing this. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Okay, so this is the, the migration dialogue. I have both panes on the left and right. The right side is the certificate that has the defaults for end user certificates of two years and to CAs as 10, 100 years actually. But the important part here is on the left side. So there's a server that's gonna manage the, the CA. There is what's called the ICWA database. Um, that's where the information gets stored. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but the important part here is the locking ID. Um, so you can either lock the ID with an individual user's ID or the server ID, which I recommend. Um, yeah, maybe we need know. to uh, say, say one or two more words about what we are doing here. <clears throat> it's called Migrate okay. Certifier. Mm -hmm. and for many customers, the certifier is a file um, on, uh, on the administrator's machine or in a very secure place. With this exercise, we are 
uploading the certifier to the Domino server into a secure place that is secured and encrypted with the server's ID. And that's the process for doing that. Right, and the place that that information gets stored is this Equal database, which is on the local server file system. Um, and down here, I've also shown the red box is that by default, the current user, in this case, the admin is added as a CAA and RA. And this is where you would specifically have to add the admin server as an RA. So you fin finish, you know, fill out the information, hit OK, and you'll get this uh, success dialog. It's going to create an MMP recourse, um, request, and that's what it looks like in the um, admin four. So after the request is processed, then next slide, please. So how do you confirm that it worked other than seeing what you saw in admin four? So the certifier document in the download directory actually gets updated. There'll be a new tab called the CA configuration tab. It will repeat a lot of the, the similar information that you saw in the uh, original migration dialogue. Um, so you see the equal path and you see the registration authority. So that's how you can confirm that you did, you know, remember to add the admin server to your registration authority. Um, and then um, it stores a link to the equity database here. Um, but you don't, make, you, don't make, you don't make any modifications here. There's, um, you would do that with the migrate tool or modify tool. But um, yeah, yeah, so don't, don't, don't try to open the database. Don't try to alter right. it. A technical attachment that is not supposed to be edited directly. Right. Okay, so now that you've created it and then you've confirmed that it's in the Dumbo directory, it's still not going to be used because the CA process only loads the certificates at start time because people aren't migrating CAs frequently. So you have to um, start the CA process if you haven't, do the tell CA refresh on the server console, and here you can see that that was done, and then do tell CA status to confirm the status. So here you see uh, the, the, the second certifier is the new one. It's of type notes and it's active and it confirms the equal path. Now, the active part relates directly to the locking ID. So if, it's, if it was, if you required a password, the active state would be no, and you would have to do a tell command to um, activate and, and then, then specify that locking ID password. Um, that, that information of how to do that is in the links that we referred to earlier. Um, the, the CA task isn't normally loaded um, by the Domino server, so you can either add it to the server task line or the preferred way is to create a program document and start it that way. That way, if you wanted to disable it, you don't have to go to edit the notes I and I on a given server. You can just go into the Domino directory and, and disable that. Yeah, and make sure to check this again, because if you skip that, um, then the next time you restart the server, it's not going to work. So the CA task must be part of the server tasks list or a program document. Right. Okay. So um, in order to, and once again, this is a deep dive, so what's better than a deep dive than a hidden view? Um, we added a new view in the Domino directory to be used by Admin Central to um, get the CA information um, because we only are using, you actually can have a CA process handle internet CAs or note CAs, and we are only doing note CAs here. So just some insider information, we added this new view that can show you all your loaded CAs for the CA process and their type. The next slide, please. Okay, so now you've done the migration of the CA process. Um, now you actually wanted to do some registering or other tasks, so how do we um, get started? So the first thing we have to do is create some configuration profiles. But in order to create the fir first configuration profile, you have to have the a certain role. Once again, this goes back to our design principle of having a junior and a senior admin. So the senior admin would want to go into the ACO and select all three roles of console, group, and profile. So you need to have the profile role to create profiles. Um, now a junior admin, you'd probably have a separate group listing those users, um, and you would probably only have the um, um, like group role. You wouldn't have necessarily the, the, the um, profile or the um, server console. Um, and then after you reopen the admin central database, there will be a gear icon that's now visible. Right, right above it actually is a server console icon.
But now if you click on that, you will see you'll be taken to what's called the planning page, which discover which brings up some of the um, prerequisites they've already discussed, but there's also information within the database itself talking about that. And now if you click on the um, profiles tab there, it'll bring up a view. Now, you can't see that I have a profile already created because of the um, view action here, but you would go to the create profile. You can choose either registration or delete person creation. So here we're going to do um, click on registration. I'm getting better at slide transitions. You yes, see that? Yes. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> um, the so here we have the registration profile. It's kind of long, so I, on the left side is the top part, and then I have the, the lower part on the list just to get everything fit on the one slide. Um, you you put in the name of the profile. Um, there um, there is a checkbox to make it a default. Um, now if you um, so. If, if you have a default, when the junior admin goes to, let's say, register a user, it, that, that'll be picked, so he doesn't have to even pick that. Um, so that's nice. Um, the other thing to talk about here is a notification. Okay, um, so you can list up to three admins here. Uh, they, an admin will get an email address, an email from any user that gets registered. You can put a body um, beginning and end, and what you were, you will get is after you register a user is that um, we don't um, allow for direct password entry. We create a secure password on the fly that gets sent in, as an email to the admin, which will include that password and an encrypted mail message. Similarly, if we're doing a password reset, you would get a similar message. So once again, it's the same, it's the same process there. Here you see in the mail section, you're going to see a lot of the similar things you use for the registration profile from the admin client. A little difference here is on the mail cluster. You can specify you specify, you specify a cluster. Um, we're going to randomly select two servers in the clusters to make replicas. If you don't want that, you could do a specific mail server and then choose other mail replica servers yourself. Um, we have all the usual information of like you know adding a group or explicit policy, um, and I'll talk more about the alternate language information in the next slide. Okay, so we talked about earlier migrating with the CA. So how does that get tied into here? So in the in the registration profile, the certifier field, only the certifiers that have been migrated to CA that are note certifiers are going to appear here. So if this is empty, you haven't migrated anything yet. Um, also, we must mention alternate language support here in the alternate organizational unit language dropdown. You can see here we have four alternate languages. They come directly from the alternate language information of, of the certifier, which can be seen on the right in, in the certifier document in the DAMA directory. So that's how the two are connected. So that's how you also you can confirm if you've had alternate language or if you configure it, how to confirm that's working. So now we did um, register a user. How about the delete person profile? Okay, back in the same area of the database, um, you click on the, the, the button and this time you choose delete person. It also can be set to a default. Um, and also, if there isn't a default profile, if an admin picks a profile, that profile will be used as his default until he or she would choose something else. So here, the only options really are to, what are you gonna do with the mail file, the ID in the vault, and whether you add the user to a deny access group, which is recommended. Okay, so now you've set up your, your registration and deletion profiles, but we haven't done anything else with it. So let's take a quick overview. So this is what's called the welcome page. Um, the welcome page is you can get back to by the home icon on the top. And the top part is part of our intention here was to try to bring things to the admin's attention directly without the admin having to look at things. So the first part talk, talks about certificate expiration. There is a view in the DOM directory that shows users certificate expirations times are grouped in different categories up to, I think, 120 days. Um, what we did is took any user that's expired or going to expire in the next two weeks and we list them here. This is where we actually use that named note feature that was added in 1201. So we nightly update that with a list of users. And if you would click on these, any of these categories, it would hot link to, um, a needs action view, which we'll discuss later. But basically, we actually create 
what's called, what's called draft request documents for the users, users to be recertified. So the admin doesn't have to do that himself. He has to, has to, has to, has to submit them. Um, oh, we, we, we all have been in that situation, like having missed an expired certificate and then having to work long hours to fix that. So seeing an overview and being able to act upon it before it expires is a, certainly of a great help. Great. Um, and then the bottom part of the UI talks about user registration status. So this is this is the per user base. So the idea here is, let's say you came in on Monday and you had to register 10 users, you could come to here and see if they were all done or not. So this is only on a per per user or per admin user and only a per day basis. So it kind of just gives a little bit of, of a timeliness update on what you've done so far in Admin Central as far as registration goes today. Now, if you click on the, the people and groups icon, you'll get to the meat of the database. Okay, so this is a user and groups pane. Um, there's two parts to create and modify tools, which is what's being displayed here. Um, needs action, we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, so we have our create tools on the left, you know, the create from registration form, which is what Thomas displayed and showed in the demo. Um, import multiple users from CSV. It's a little different from what the admin client does because of the preferences. Um, you know, the importation, the, the CSV file for, for the admin client can take a lot more parameters we only support the parameters we can modify in the application, which is basically the user's name and alternate org information. You can do Active Directory, create a group, and then on the right side, we have all the modified tools. You know, certify, delete, rename, common name, the new certifier, those all will use the CA process. The password reset, an ID download, I mentioned once again, if you do a password reset, the admin gets an email with the um, new password. ID file upload, and then the basic modify group, you know, rename, modify, and delete. Uh, once again, in the future, we'll be looking to add application management and server management, but we started with these basic actions so far. Cool. Okay, so, so um, this, I think, is Thomas's favorite slide. Thomas, do you want to say why? <laughs> well, <laughs> Yes, it is. Well, not the most favorite slide in this deck, but in, in general, I really, really like the outcome of Admin Central being so simple because uh, creating users and managing users is a breeze. Um, compared to what the admin client required you to provide for registering just one user, this is quite a difference. And we've put these two screenshots next to one another, showing Admin Central to the left and the admin client to the right. And by the way, if, if you like to use the admin client to registering your, for registering your users, you can of course still do that, but you see that Admin Central uh, provides a whole lot of a more simple user interface. You probably are a lot quicker in managing your users rather than having to type in all this information in that admin client UI. So I, I really like um, the outcome of Admin Central and I hope you do as well. Perfect summary there, Thomas, thank you very much. It, it, as you said, it, it captures the difference right there. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the, about the activity log. Okay, um, perfect. Yeah, see the activity log, once again, I said, because this is a client request model, unlike the admin client, um, you actually can see um, what was done today and by whom. Um, and so here you can see the, the different activities that were done. You have a certified register. Um, you can see the status. Once again, if this was pending admin P, you would see waiting for admin P. Um, on the status bar, um, the admin who initiated it is listed in the one column. And then we have these four little boxes across the top. Thomas, could you click there? Yep, that just did. It should appear right now. Yes, it did. So this is just a, a filter, All right? So if you wanna just click to find out what your errors are because that's what you're most concerned with. If you click on the errors, it'll select only those in the view and therefore filter out all the other ones. Um, you can always click back to the total to see everything if you want, um, we're pending. Um, but it's just a little faster way to, to, to navigate if you wanna drive down really fast onto um, a problem versus how things are going all overall. And the last view that we have to discuss is the, is the draft view. So once again, if you are doing bulk registration with the CSV import, or if you have the recertification um, draft requests that were created by the nightly job. Um, this is where you actually can go see them. 
Um, you, you can edit them, only those fields that are editable that would have been during the original um, creation of the request. Um, then all you have to do is multi-select and you can multi-select as many as you want and, uh, and of different types, hit submit. They will now go into the needs processing state into the regular, regular activity log view. Hmm. Actually, to admit, uh, I think this is my most favorite slide in the deck. <laughs> uh, because, um, thank you, Mark, for um, showing how to set up Admin Central. But with having set this up, you can manage users from pretty much any device. And these four screenshots are just showing how Admin Central would look like on a smartphone. Now, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you should do all your work from a smartphone, but we all have been in situations where it was necessary to perform an urgent action in a timely manner. And typically, the device you have available um, fastest way is your smartphone. So with Admin Central being set up, you can quickly manage users from anywhere. That was a promise, and with v14, we've delivered that. But there's a goodie. There's one more goodie. Mark, um, would you like to cover the server console quickly? Sure. So, so um, this, this was an important aspect. We, we kind of joked that this was our um, the admin on the beach screen. Um, <laughs> that um, you know, admin on the beach and on vacation has to do something critical to the server. So, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have access to the server console? So, we actually have two flavors shown here. Is what's called the static version, where you connect to a server issue a command and you see the response. So here our show server was done. You can copy that response if you want to you know, copy the results included in an email. Um, there's also the live um, console, which you know, there's a button for that that's not on this, the screen capture, but right. would be on the bottom right. Um, but now the live console is a notes design element. Um, it's, it's, the screen real estate is kind of small. We do have requests in to have that to be expanded, um, but it is present, so you can do it. Um, but the important thing to know here is we talked earlier during the setup of the ACL, you have to have the console admin role in order to see that. If you don't have it, you won't even see the button to click to get to this part. But so have a happy beach day, all you admins. <laughs> I was told we, we should not be using the beach example too often because then people are just out at the beach. Uh, anyway, um, enough of this fun talk. Hey, thanks, Mark, for covering Admin Central. Just for the sake of time, I see we only have 15 minutes planned for our webcast or remaining for our webcast. So I think I'll have to cover the next uh, block uh, in a bit of a faster way because we want to have time, a little bit of time for Q&A. So uh, switching from Admin Central to the Domino Administrator client where also new features have been delivered and others were updated. Uh, I wanted to let you know what is the difference between your previous version 12 and version 14. So we've just seen um, administration functions being consolidated into Admin Central and that's providing a great help for you out there to streamline uh, user and group management. Uh, clearly, one of the bigger changes in version 14 is that the client is now 64-bit only, and that's also applying to the admin client. So it's a 64-bit only admin client, and with that comes a number of smaller changes that I need to outline here. Um, you may or may have not noticed them when using the admin client already. Um, but let's first cover the left side. Um, we've added new functions such as and showing the encryption state in files panels or adding the ability to uh, provide more secure HTTP password hashes if you're still using them or providing stronger password options for the notes ID password. On the right hand side, I've summarized a number of smaller features that are deprecated, no longer available in the client. Um, and I'll need to show some of them in details. First of all, we used to have a server performance tab that was doing charting and real-time statistics, um, basically using activity trends on the server uh, with activity uh, trends and planning capabilities used in form of a change manager task. That wasn't widely used out there and because of converting to 64-bit, it wasn't contained any longer. Um, so we've communicated that already. That should not be anything new. 
what we also had to remove or wanted to remove was the Domino upgrade services. Uh, this, I think I have another slide for that. Here it is. The Domino upgrade services, if you have never heard of this, it's a rather dated uh, feature that allowed the admin client to read user information directly from an external LDAP in the context of registering users. Well, logically that's obsolete because we've introduced the Domino directory sync feature in version 11, uh, which allows the Domino server to connect to a remote LDAP and fetch the information for you already. So why do you need the admin client to connect to that remote LDAP. That's why we've removed that feature. So you see the screenshots of the admin client version 12 to the left and admin client version 14 on the right hand side where that button migrate people is missing. As you've seen in admin central, you can very well register users directly from an active directory or a third party LDAP uh, just by using by setting up directory sync in the, on the Domino server. A really interesting enhancement based on your request is uh, to show the database encryption state in the files panel of the admin client. So when you see a um, list of databases on your server, the title and file name, there is now a new column called encryption state. And that shows the state of the database being encrypted on disk. And it can have uh, four different statuses like can be empty, that means the database isn't encrypted at all, or it shows encrypted, which means it's activated, but um, there can also be two additional status information such as queued for encryption or queued for decryption. And that is especially useful when you want to enable encryption for a number of databases at once. You can select them in the files panel and just say uh, encrypt this database using the following settings and that setting will be written to the server. And the next time Compact or DBMT will run, it will handle the encryption for you. Um, so the entire processing is done at the back end, and you don't have to wait for your notes client to complete the task. So with that, I think we have a little bit of a level set here on what administrators should have uh, enabled in their environment. I've used this slide before. But I can't show this often enough to remind people about all the good features we have in the product that you just need to use. So the must-haves by now are you should be running at least Domino 1202 Fix Pack 3 or version 14 preferably. Of course having encryption enabled everywhere, an RPC port encryption you need to enable SSL TLS everywhere please. Please use the certificate manager, a new feature we've introduced uh, some time ago that really makes SL key file management a breeze. And also please use DBMT. It's not a new feature in version 14, but it's a feature that will make database management a lot more simple. Um, I had to remind a couple of um, customers to check the supported operating system version because they were upgrading Domino uh, continuously, but never looked at the operating system. So when you get back to your desk, check the operating system your servers are running and make sure to also keep that current. Please also use transaction logging, DAOs, tier one, and so forth and so forth. And regularly check the security settings, especially ID file encryption strength and so forth. There was another webinar we did, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, the Domino security webinar in this series. So watch the replay <clears throat> for more information about all the good things around security. I promised we wanna do a little bit of a Q and A at the end. So uh, I'll give Tim a small chance to read <clears throat> and select some of the questions to be brought up uh, here live on stage. But uh, while he's doing that, I'm showing a QR code, which is a reminder to administrators out there to a little survey we've done, or we have out there, where we are requesting admins to provide feedback on how they are using Domino. As you all know, Domino doesn't track customers. We don't report back anything to the vendor. So occasionally we have to ask a survey. And because we are in a group of admins, I wanted to remind people to take 
uh, three minutes of their time and fill out this anonymous survey about which features you have enabled in your environment. All right, I'll, I'll leave that page up. Um, Tim, over to you. Are you are you there? Are there any questions with regards to Admin Central and the content we've shown so far? Oh, there are lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of well, questions. Um, can we cover them in the eight minutes we have? <laughs> Not all of them, no. Um, there are some <laughs> really good questions. Um, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, where was it? I saw a really good one. There's a bunch of questions about um, symmetrical clustering. Um, lot, one that's just been answered, um, do symmetrical clusters need to be running the same domino versions? Nomala, would you like to cover that? Uh, yes, I just answered that question. So by symmetrical clusters, we actually mean that they are two, do two or more domino servers that want to maintain uh, consistent replicas of databases under you know, folders. So if you have a mail folder on server one and server two, they will be maintained symmetrically that say in case anything happens to a database on the other server, um, the you know it will be picked it will be replicated via repair from the other server so it it is it happens under the covers right users administrators don't have to take an action to force the replication to the other server so this now in 14 will apply to Deus also under the covers not just the NSF um, ideally we would prefer the cluster members to be on the same domino version just because if there are any issues that are fixed in any of the code that maintain the cluster symmetry, uh, you know, um, you know, you are not up for, you know, opening up to bugs. So we would recommend using the same domino version on the cluster members, though it is not like mandatory. Yeah, but uh, technically it would work to have, say, one for one server on a higher fixed pack version than the other. Correct. Yeah, but your recommendation is, of course, keep them both in sync because um, the newer version typically has um, most bug fixes included. More, most bug fixes. And say, like, for the case of, like, the Deus repair that was introduced in 14.0, right, the mm -hmm. back-level servers, you know, don't have that. So they would not be able to do a Deus repair um, unless you are on 14. So for that reason, you typically want to uh, be at the same level after a certain point in time. All right. Then uh, the, the next one I'd like you to take a look at is um, Admin Central looks great. So thanks for that. Um, is it possible to offer self-registration for users, e.g. for CCX users? Oh, good question. Yes. Um, good question. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, I think we would like to have that idea written up in our AHA Ideas portal. And people who want to have that implemented should certainly be voting for it. So please put that idea into the ideas portal. Yeah, and uh, Thomas, I also saw several requests for different tasks for Admin Central and others. Uh, so I think we should uh, make sure that uh, we provide the attendees the link so that uh, all the information can be docked uh, from the attendees into the AHA requests and like voting done so we can prioritize. Yes, I'm just looking for the QR code, but I don't have that in the deck for this week. Uh, are you looking for the AHA Ideas Portal? Well, I just wanted to have the QR code so that people can quickly get okay. to it. Well, if yeah, I do see that... Tim uh, uh, providing a link in the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did just put that in the Q&A um, as to the uh, link to the Ideas Portal. I'm also going to add that to the chat and send that to everyone. Um, so that everyone's got that link as well. Um, so if you want a link to the, the replays uh, or the, the slides, then you'll find that in the chat as well as a link to the ideas portal. Um, there have been a lot of questions around um, the CA process and why can't you just automate all of that? Why do we have to do it all manually? Well, the input, well, the merging of a local certifier ID file into the CA, that setup has to be done once for the certifier. And once you've done that, you can register users with that certifier. How can we automate that? I mean, it's 
part of our security concept to have the certificate certifier file separated. Right. Completely. So one, one of the question I think from uh, Martin, I think was to see if the, the certified ID passwords can be uh, uh, saved in uh, the admin settle itself. My answer was that we already have a secure way of saving it in the Domino CA on, with the equal databases. So it didn't make sense for us to have yet another database uh, and then, you know, security store to save them in Admin Central database, you know. Um, I, I see, and that I was see. my answer. So we tried to reuse what existed already as a framework. Mm. Uh, and, and I think we should look at all ways of making sure that the migration is easier for admins. Um, and uh, remove any yeah. issues in that space. Yeah. The proposal in this case was um, just upload the certifier into Admin Central rather than using the CA process. But in that context, the CA process is more secure. So uh, let's right. use what we have. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. Tim, any more? Uh, yeah, there was one around, um, there was a lot of questions around auto update actually and Nomad. Um, and verse not being in auto update. So I wondered if you wanted to just quickly, I know you've covered that already in a previous webinar, but since there were so many questions about it, did you want to cover that off? Uh, don't know if I fully understood the context, but yes, I would have referred to the webinar we did two weeks ago. Uh, and um, if it's about the notes client and notes client AUT being no, integrated. It's about, okay, so let me rephrase the question. So there's a lot of people saying, um, auto update's great. However, I don't mm -hmm. see no, Nomad or Verse in auto update. Yeah, yet. so currently auto update database is currently set up in 14.0 for notes, domino, and traveler only. Nomad Verse is being planned in a future release. Thank you, Namala. That's the answer I was looking for. Yes. <laughs> okay. I didn't I quite didn't get understand. To answer it because there were so many questions popping up in the chat, in the question. Yeah, it's difficult people, to keep so, track of everything. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's maybe all we, we have should. Time for, actually. Uh, yeah, I see time running out, but I think Nirmala, we should mention that based on the feedback we've got from Auto Upgrade and AUT integration, um, we are thinking of creating a video for you folks out there uh, on how to set that all up, meaning beyond Auto Upgrade, how to also cover Notes client upgrades. So beyond of this webinar series, please um, watch out for more video training material being created by HCL that you can leverage. Uh, here's a really good one actually um, that's just come in. Does Domino 14 support the ability to store server IDs in the ID vault? Uh, Domino 14 does not currently do that, but we have that, well, we are aware of this request, even planning to do that, but it hasn't been implemented yet. The reasons and with that, for storing it, for reason for storing the ID, for server ID file in an ID vault would be to automate server deployments and be a lot more flexible with that regard. But I see we're running out of time, so sorry for that if we can't cover all your questions. Um, as usual, we'll get back to you in a transcript that we attach to the tech note, to the replay tech note. So with that, Tim. I don't know if you just wanted to say something else to close, but uh, I see it's uh, about time. No, to just, wrap. Yeah, just to say that we are planning to answer all of the questions that we haven't managed to answer in the chat. Um, we're going to create a QA and a at the back of the webinar series and get that posted on the blog um, for all of the questions in the, in the webinar series. Um, and we'll get back to you shortly with the replay for this one in the next couple of days. So take a look out for that. You have the URLs to find those. And thanks for coming this week. Thomas, back to you to close it out. Couldn't say it any better. Thank, thank you all out there. Thanks to the team. Thanks, Tim, for managing Q&A, Mark for presentation, Nirmala, Annalyn, Nancy, and all the others that were supporting behind the scenes. Uh, thanks for this time. See you again next week with uh, Domino V14 application development. Thank you, and bye-bye.